the eight tasks we are, we are addressing here have been derived from disasters like Fukushima, but also from other disasters. In Fukushima specifically, in the first 24 hours, if someone could have went in, the whole escalation of the nuclear catastrophe had, could have been prevented, but no, humans could not enter because of the high radioactivity. Now imagine that in the future, these, these kind of robot technology is becoming available, maybe in 10 or 15 years, and in future firefighter brigades would have a truck, and on their truck, they would have such a robot, they could send the robot in when it's so dangerous for them to, to look for, uh, to, 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 to uh, look out for the scene, look for victims, what's the situation there, and then they could truly help the firefighters save their lives and save other lives. we were able to create this humanoid robot that can go into places where humans can go. If humans can go there, this robot can go there. And that's good for not only this competition, where we want to put the robot into a disaster response situation, but also for NASA in general, because we send humans into outer space and we would like to be able to send robots that don't need any specialization. that people won't have to do some of the worst jobs. Just imagine the worst jobs in the world. And then that's what these robots should be going after. For 20, 30 years, I've asked people, if you had a robot, what would you have it do for you? When I ask children that, they say two things. They say, do my homework and clean my room. When I ask adults, they just say clean. I guess adults don't have to do any homework anymore, but they just say clean. So you won't be surprised on the International Space Station, guess what we've got Robonaut doing? A lot of chores.